Makeba the Great. Unless you are of a certain generation, the name Miriam Makeba will mean little or nothing to you. But for generations, this glorious, talented African woman steered souls and fed hearts with a steady diet of lovely and lively songs which shared the rhythms and voices of South Africa with millions. She was born in March 1932 under apartheid, the daughter of a Xhosa father and a Swazi mother, who was said to have been a Sangoma, or mystic. She showed musical talent at an early age and began public performances as a teenager. From that time until the end of her life, she was a musical artist and equally an activist for African freedom worldwide. During her life, she was the wife of South African jazz trumpeter Hugh Masakela and later black revolutionary Kwame Touré, formerly known as Stokely Carmichael. Her marriage to Touré resulted in the loss of scores of contracts and concerts by forces which opposed the black freedom movement. For her songs, which attacked and criticized the racist apartheid regime in South Africa, her music was banned, and she was denied the right to return to her homeland. She lived away from her birthplace for nearly three decades, and the regime wouldn't even allow her to return when she wished to attend her mother's funeral. In 1960, the government revoked her citizenship. If her homeland was out of reach to her, Africa and the black world were not. She acted in films and on TV. She appeared as a guest star on The Cosby Show. And in the acclaimed 1992 movie Serafina, about the youth rebellion against the regime in Soweto. Her contralto graced many songs, but she was perhaps best known for her upbeat Pata Pata song, as well as her hit The Click Song, which was based on clicking sounds used in Xhosa. She died on stage in Italy at an anti-mafia concert following the slayings of six Ghanaians there, after performing so well that the audience called for an encore. Makeba was 76. From Death Row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio. Eartha May Kitt, 1928-2008. For generations, the name Eartha Kitt was synonymous with sexy, sultry, and outspoken. In an industry where careers can sometimes be measured in minutes, Eartha Kitt was the real thing, a dancer, singer, actress, and on occasion a comedian. Since the tender age of 14, she worked the stage, and for nearly seven decades, she left her indelible imprint by work on the big screen, TV, and on recordings. On January 26, 1928, she was born in North, South Carolina, as Eartha May Kitt. She danced, sang, and acted her way into the hearts of millions. In 1968, she dared speak out against war, and was both hounded and blacklisted because of it. That's because she did so at a photo op at the White House in the face of First Lady Lady Bird Johnson. For daring to speak her mind at the heart of the empire, and for denouncing an imperial war, the media and the state tried to disappear her. She had to go abroad to find her freedom of speech, living and working overseas for nearly a decade. For those who want to see her as a seductive chanteuse, the 1958 film St. Louis Blues, starring Nat King Cole, Ruby D. Pearl Bailey, and the gospel great Mahalia Jackson, is a great source. For a slightly comic turn, see her as an amorous, entrepreneurial cougar on the hunt for a young Eddie Murphy in the 1992 film Boomerang, starring Halle Berry as the principal love interest. Although she was known as the quintessential sex kitten for her acting, her outspokenness came at quite a cost. Her comings, goings, doings, and sayings were tracked by both the FBI and the CIA. She moved through life with an intelligence, wit, and nerve that made her distinctive and unforgettable. Eartha May Kitt was 80. From Death Row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio. Sylvia Robinson, Rap's Mama Passes. When one thinks of rap, Hundreds of names pop up, but few outside the know would opt for Sylvia Robinson of Harlem. For one thing, while she was a talented musician and singer, rap wasn't really her forte. She was more an R&B and pop kind of woman. Yet as fate would have it, 
she earned the title of the mother of hip-hop by virtue of chance and necessity. Several years ago, she was interviewed by noted cultural historian James G. Spady. Spady, a weekly columnist for the Philadelphia paper Scoop USA, and one of the co-authors of the 1999 book Street Conscious Rap, found Robinson describing her moment of revelation as a virtual spiritual experience. She went to a disco in Harlem one night to attend her sister's birthday party. She was bored, depressed, until she saw something telling Spady, I was getting up in the balcony and I saw all these kids on the floor. And here was a fella talking on a mic with music playing. And I saw if he told them to do this or do that, they did it. All of a sudden, I felt a chill all over my body. And a voice said to me, you put that on tape and you'll be out of all the trouble you've ever been in. And all at once, I felt the chills all over my body, like the Holy Spirit overcoming me. And that's how it happened. It was really a revelation of God how that happened. Her tapes became records, and that launched an urban and now global industry that accrues over $40 billion a year today. Robinson started the Sugar Hill Records label back in the 70s. Robinson was a part of the 1950s era duo, Mickey and Sylvia, which recorded Love is Strange. Her later piece, Pillow Talk, was a sexy R&B and pop hit. She sang, played guitar, and wrote music as well as produced music. Sylvia Robinson passed recently at 75 years of age after a lifetime of making music. From Death Row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Tina Marie, the news came as a shock from a phone call with my wife, a diehard fan who broke the news that Tina Marie the best musical half of Funkster Rick, Super Freak James, had died. In that split second, between shock and disbelief, came recollections of her stage performances, her splendid mezzo-soprano, her adept guitar play, and her collaboration with James, which produced such monster hits as Fire and Desire, Square Biz, and her solo Lover Girl, where she sang and strummed with wild abandon. She was the first white act signed by Motown, and her singing was so soulful that many fans who fell in love with her expression were shocked to discover she was white, probably because the company didn't put out her photo. While Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson performed a hit record and video as Ebony and Ivory, Tina Marie and Rick James performed a movement that blazed across stages and over airwaves for years. Their simulated love play between fire and desire lit millions of barely licit fantasies and became soul and funk standards. At the intersection of 20th century black music, where funk, soul, and R&B mixed, stood Tina Marie, whirling like a dervish, her wail on fire, aglow with her hot guitar. Tina Marie, who reportedly passed in her sleep, was 54. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Donna Summer, Disco Queen. It's not cool to say it, but there was a time when disco was cool. And one of the coolest of them all was Donna Summer, whose voice, brown beauty, and power of performance made her a master of the game. Her clear, church-trained instrument commanded many a song that didn't belong in church. Bad Girl. Love to Love You Baby, Hot Stuff, Last Dance, and Nightlife, just to name a few. In an era when black pop music was almost as segregated as its people, disco, with its repetitive, synthesizer-driven dance beats, seemed to promise a larger payday and more commercial success for black artists. Instead, the opposite was true. Many black radio stations chasing the apparent promise of this new pop music, jettisoned their black acts, refused to play black funk. And before long, funk was gone, and disco was entering its death rattle. In the end, disco was like neon, warm and colorful, but not hot nor funky. The era shined a good deal hotter when Donna Summer graced the stage. Donna Summer. 
disco queen ends the dance at 63. From Imprison Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Whitney Houston, 1963, 2012. The death of songbird Whitney Houston hit like a thunderclap. At the age of 48, she was found dead in a Beverly Hills hotel room. As of this writing, cause unknown. Her voice was an instrument of which one can only marvel. Apparently, many, many folks felt likewise, for she sold an estimated 170 million records and videos. She won virtually every award available, Grammys by the double, it seemed. But more important was her music, love songs, pop songs, ballads, and show tunes that dazzled and delighted, like, I will always love you. I want to dance with somebody. Saving all my love for you. Run to you. You give good love and many, many more. Her voice, her pace, her phrasing, her stage presence, and her beauty was a package that defined Star. Ironically, the very media that savaged her for years went into worship mode when she was gone and could no longer hear them. Whitney Houston was a daughter, wife, mother, and actress. Her songs will be heard, sung, and loved for generations. From Imprison Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Amy Winehouse, 1983-2011. She had us at her voice. Amy Winehouse, the young British songstress, dazzled the world with her dark, sultry, jazz and blues influence delivery. Her sound, a throaty contralto, presented over a tight, talented band, earned her an amazing five Grammys in 2007 principally for her hit single, Rehab, an amazing song with the now ironic lyric. My daddy said to go to rehab, I said a no, no, no. That voice and her beehive hairdo, heavy mascara, made her catnip to the British press, which fought for and often got photos of her at her worst moments. Breakups, flings, getting high, getting down, all fed the beast with the narrative of a rising, then falling star. Well, a talented and gifted singer has fallen for the last time. Amy Winehouse was 27. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Nick Ashford, 1941-2011. The news of the passing of music legend Nick Ashford was as surprising as learning his age, almost 70. Nick Ashford, half of the incredible singing and songwriting duo Ashford and Simpson, both sang and wrote some of the most beautiful songs of the late 20th century, often paired with his wife, Valerie Simpson. For Ashford and Simpson, their most memorable hit may have been Solid as a Rock, fueled to great heights by his formidable falsetto which was a sweet melody besides Simpson's contralto. As the film and stage greats Ozzie Davis and Ruby Dee exemplified love and excellence in their fields, Ashford and Simpson reflected these qualities in their soul, R&B, and pop creations. Like Davis and Dee, they reflected the beauty of black love. Ashford was an amazing songwriter, and one of his biggest hits was a song I only recently learned he wrote, I'm Every Woman made a feminist standard by the Chicago powerhouse Shaka Khan. Yes, written by a man. Ashford was a master of his craft, cause of death, throat cancer. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio.